Kenmore machine, but it's made by LG, the washing machine. Uh, this is schematic. I know it's a little hard to read, but you guys all have this on your thumb drive, this diagram. Um, you know, when you're working in the, in the, in the shop and you're, and you're going through these machines, one of the things is testing and identifying the components within the washer. And I don't want you just to take a pump out, put it on the table, there's two terminals, you put it in the air and say, yeah, I got a radiant and put it back. Okay? You want to know, are there other ways you can test it and how? Why would I test it? And diagnostics, there's a cycle called a diagnostic cycle. What does that do for you? How do you use it and what's important about it, okay? So if we're looking at this washer here, this Kenmore washer, oops, uh, so this is a Kenmore, but it's built by LG, a Korean-made machine. So what I want to do, I need to use my mouse to move it up. The picture's so big, so I have to resize it as I go. Let me, uh, no, that's why it's not working. And I'll resize it, and I'm going to bring it up. So I know this looks a little complicated if this is one of the first times you see it. But let's break down parts of the diagram. What am I looking at? You know, I see a bunch of lines and everything. I don't know where to go. I don't know where, what it's doing. I can read words and say that this is a pump. Like if you go down here, and that says washing heater. So I know that that's the heating element inside the washer. But what more does it tell you? Well, these are all the components in the machine. We have drain pump, circulation pump, door lock switch. These are all of our water valves at the top of the washing machine. Here is the power cord. This is where power comes in. So that would be this plug right here. Noise filter, heating element. And then we have all these other components on the top of the diagram. Display PCB printed circuit board. That's what PCB stands for. This is the user interface. So they call this part of the washer the user interface. It's the one that you guys use user interfaces every day. Every time you cook something in a microwave and you press 200 start, that is the user interface. Those took a place of mechanical switches. Like you wanted to turn something on, you had to hit a switch and then turn on a light or turn on an element or something. The user interface are actual little switches, electronic, and when you press a button, it completes a circuit to this rectangular box right here. Let me just draw a little outline of it. So this rectangular box right here is the main PCB or the main printed circuit board. So that's the computer on the back of this washing machine that controls everything. On older machines, we'd call them what? What would an older machine be that didn't have a computer board? What would be the same part that a computer board does? A timer switch. A timer. Mm -hmm. A timer. And a whole timer. Yeah, whole timer. Come, one of them here and one of them here. You can see them on both sides. One of them does what? Drain. Drain. And the other one the circulates the water. Now the problem is, is that the washing machine pump is down here behind that little door on the bottom of the machine. Now I can open up the door. I can see that there's a pump in there, but I can't get to the wires to test that pump. Now this machine is filled with water, and in order for me to get down to that <coughs> pump, I have to take this whole control user interface off and the front door panel off. <laughs> to get down to the pump. Water and close inside the machine. The door will not unlock if the machine's full of water. I can mechanically get in there and bypass it, but I can make a mess too, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so what do I do? Do I own, take the machine all apart, go down to the pump and ohm out the motor? Put it in diagnostic. Put it in diagnostic, mm -hmm. okay. And specifically, if I put in diagnostic, what am I attempting to do? You're attempting to make to aggravate the pump to to run so it can drain the water out. That same okay, way. so I go, I want to go into diagnostics, and this is why diagnostic cycles are important. 
On a mechanical timer, if I wanted the machine to drain the water out, I could turn the dial to spin and drain, pull it out, and the pump's going to run. Mm -hmm. But on a computer, when you go into a specific pot cycle, like wides, heavy duty, we do have a rinse and spin. But if I do rinse and spin, rinse means it's filling with fresh water and washing for a little bit, then it's draining it out. It's, it's like you wash clothes with soap, and then you stick them in another bucket with fresh water to get the soap off, and then you hang it on the line to get the water out. So rinse is no soap, that's all. So if I wanted to, the closest cycle to drain would be rinse and spin, and I'd have to let it run through that cycle. And then if that's not my problem, then I'm trying to run through another cycle to test something else or whatever. So diagnostics allows you to turn on one specific part at a time. So you're only checking that part. You're not checking the whole cycle. Okay? So if I want to go into this machine, in the washing machine ends up where? On the board. Connected to the control board somehow or some way. If you look, this heater is connected to the board on this plug right here. The power coming in is connected on that plug right there. Each one of these boxes are plugs where these parts or components are all connected to that control board. We got another one here, another one here, another one here, 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 and here. The one I want to look for is the one that is controlling my drain pump. Now, if we look at the drain pump down here, we have to follow, and this is the motor of the pump, we have to follow terminals two and terminals three to how do they get back to the control board so I can test the pump from the board. Now, there's more to this ohms testing or whatever, but I, I want to talk about this is how we go about it, step by step. We came to the machine, we diagnosed or, or concluded that our problem was in drain. We've thought about going into diagnostics, but we want to test the ohms of our pump. That's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But let's follow this pump back. Let's follow this terminal here, terminal three, and if you follow the line, you have to stay on the line, just like, just like a map. Look at where this thing jumps to, right? It jumps to pin number one, on this four pin plug, this WH plug. WH means that the plug is white, the connector's white. We've got a black plug, a yellow plug, a red plug, another white one, whatever, but this white one's got nine wires or nine pins on it. This one only has four. So we're looking for a plug with four wires on it, and we're looking at these colors here. Now if I go, let me just erase a little bit. Once I find the plug, if you look closely, we got brown, gray, orange, and blue. B R G Y O R B U. Those are the colors of the wires. What color wire is this one that I highlighted going to that plug? It's brown. It's a brown wire. So that's one of the wires I want to put my meter on on the control board to test that pump. Now we need to find the other side. Let me change the color of the of the line so it's easier to follow. And now I'm going to follow the other side of this motor and pump. I'm going to come up. Now i got two directions to go. I can come up here on this line, this thick black one, it don't disregard it, and I can follow it up here. Watch this. It jumps from here, and it jumps off the water valve, and then it comes back up here, but it goes to a different plug on the board, a blue plug. So the drain pump has two wires, one coming in, one going out. They don't connect to the same plug on the computer board. One of the wires in the pump is on this plug, and another wire is on that plug. So we can go to the brown wire and black wire, black one on this plug, and brown one on that one. Just leave it if you want. OK. So we got brown one and the black one there. So we could go to this computer board, which I want you guys now, in, in, a, in a second, to, to find those two wires, and we're going to ohm out the pump. What would be a better test if I wanted to check that pump? Would an ohms test 
be the best test I can make to troubleshoot why this pump is not working? No, it would be a diagnostic test to send it straight to try to activate it and make it going to uh, working right. Okay, so let's say I go into diagnostics and it's not training. Oh, do it again. Okay, are you in step one or are you in step two right now once you enter diagnostics? Well, as soon as I go on diagnostics, we're testing the LED. So that's the first step before we get into step one. Okay, but I thought the LED step was step one. Let's see. Okay, wait, when we go here, step mm -hmm. one, step no, one. LEDs is nothing. Nothing, that's the first so step. Go one step. Yep. And it should be tumbling clockwise. Is it is it tumbling? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So press again, and it should go into spin slow. Mm -hmm. Wait. Mm -hmm. Now watch. Notice the display here is telling you how many RPMs it is. How many t how many revolutions per minute spinning? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go one more time. Should go to high speed spin. Could go as high as 1100 RPMs, 1200 RPMs. It's very fast for a washing machine. If you go too fast, your clothes stick to the basket. And the basket has a bunch of little holes. You have a bunch of little like dimples on your clothes because it tried to force its way through the basket. Okay, let's go one more. We should be on the free wash. Again, now main wash. Again, hot valve. Bleach. Tumble counterclockwise. Press it. And press again. Heater turns on. Circulation, one more. Then drain. Okay, right there should be going in the drain. Now you're a drain running. Are you in drain? That's what we got into before. I think that's Lucy. No, it's the next one. Is it because I think now it's in circulation. You can't, you can't, you got okay, off of the... the circulation pump is not, is, is, has nothing to do with the wash pump. No, I say even the plastic is out, it has nothing to do with it running. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's what I was asking. Where the heck did this, this thing move? There it goes. I don't hear the circulation pump running. Go one more time if we're in the drain. That's not the drain? No, trying pump, to. Pump sounds louder than that. Press it again. It's going to go off. Those are the water valves vibrating. Click it again. It's going to power off. Press it again. Well, then that must be the pump. No pumps are running. Press it again. It's spinning. It's spinning. So it went back through the cycle? Probably. We have to go one more time. Mm -hmm. That's a drain pump. That's a drain pump. So what I think it was when it was going and spinning we RPM, didn't let it stop spinning. we didn't let it stop spinning so that so it could advance. So you see now we got 120 spinning. volts at that brown and blue wire. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you went to someone's house, this machine's not draining. Let's let's go over the steps that we went through to get where we are. Mm -hmm. We looked and saw what the machine was doing. We saw it was filled with water. We assumed there's a draining problem. Right. We want to test the drain. Going to diagnostics, we just to see if it works. We got to the drain step, water didn't go out, assuming, you know? So then we said, okay, how do we test it? Well, we can go down to it, but it's not that easy to get to. So the very next thing to do is we want to go to the board. From the brown and, and, and the black wire at this point, I did an ohms test. That gave me two things of information. One, I had a good ohms reading. That meant what? that the windings in the motor was good. Yeah, yeah. But it also told me that the wires from here are good because they're going down to that motor. Yeah, if there was anything wrong with the wiring, yeah. I'd get no reading at all, like yeah. as if the pump was bad. Mm -hmm. So you see, like, we're going through a logical step to troubleshoot it. We owned it out that Ohm's test told us two things. So now we went to voltage, and when we went to voltage, it told us we had 120 volts coming to the mm -hmm. to the pump, or at least coming out of the of the board. But the ohms test told me it's got to be going to my pump. Right. At this point, I would check physical obstruction inside the machine. 
and remove it, it automatically timed out. Mm -hmm. I have physical obstruction in the pump, and if I don't see it, then I'm going to order a new pump. Mm -hmm. Air cold. Any questions, guys? No? No well, questions? I'm, I'm surprised. No questions? Does it matter which connection you put on first? No, it doesn't matter which one you put in first, but you need both of them in. Only one of them alone will not allow the meter to get any type of reading, whether it's ohms reading or volt reading. You need both meters. A meter is almost like a light bulb. Mm -hmm. Okay? The numbers that change here are almost like a light bulb that turns on. If there's electricity, a light bulb turns on. If there's electricity, the meter will give you a reading. Okay? But we cannot connect a light bulb with just one wire. It needs the electrical current to flow through it, so there's one wire bringing the current in, and the other one's for the current to flow out. Okay? A light bulb is not like a balloon where we bring power into it, and the power just ends inside that light bulb, and it fills up like, like a balloon. It comes in, flows through it, and goes right out. It's the flow of that electricity which causes the light bulb to glow bright. It's the flow that makes the motor rotate. Not that there's electricity at the motor, but there's current flowing through. Current is the actual movement of the electricity. Okay? I can have a hose connected to the wall, but if I don't turn on the valve, 